All right, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody had an awesome day yesterday. Uh, got a few emails in reference to trading this week and whether or not it's been easy or challenging. Um, beyond a shadow of a doubt, there is there has been a lot of opportunity to make money this week. Um, I, I I know that not only in in my own trading, what I see everybody here doing, but when I start to hear emails from all of my friends. Uh, that are prop trading and uh, either wanting to get into the business because they know this increase in volatility is really where all the money's made, uh, or my friends who actually are prop trading um, or running prop trading firms and telling me that um, basically bragging about how much money everybody made this week. And um, I, I guess what I want to address without anybody necessarily needing to say anything if you found this week was not a week that you were confident because of the volatility or for whatever reason it really doesn't matter what the reason is and we can you know we can obviously discuss that in a private call if uh, if, if anybody would like to shoot me an email I'll be more than happy to hop on a call um, it, it in my opinion it means only one thing assuming you understand what you're looking at it means that your list is too big and if it's not too big it means that you're not working hard enough to find entries cycling through your list so if that was the case this week, don't get pissed off. Get better. There's there's really no other way to put it. If um if you, look, I, I, I'm I'll, I'll normally sugarcoat like you know if 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 like something happened, it won't, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. This was a good week to trade. There were pockets of opportunity where it's a little challenging. Where maybe we had a fast move down, fast move up, like within a couple of hours or something like that. But this was a week of volatility where the, there were really clean trends. Um, and Wednesday and Thursday probably um, emphasized that in such a big way, especially Thursday with a monster move down uh, and and really didn't move that far against you when the trend did go down. Yesterday, we planned for a lower opening. We, we, um, uh, we basically called it. I mean, there's really no other way to put it. We basically called it. Um, so... I'm, I'm starting the meeting out like this, not to be negative, but to inspire you to figure out or at least start to whittle down what is in your way so that we can remove it so it's not there anymore. So that when, when money does appear where, the, where there's better opportunities, you, you're, you're more than prepared to take advantage of it. Now, the only other thing it could be if you didn't make money this week is you're still not confident in how you're making decisions, which translates into hesitating translates into getting shaken out of one candle and not re-entering. Or even if you do get shaken out of one candle, not recognizing that the order flow is still intact or the momentum is still intact and you should still be back in the trade or re-entering the trade, whichever one, you know, whichever one of those happens to be. From what I could see in the room, and, and obviously this is just from our, you know, from you briefly typing stuff in or maybe from phone calls. It seems like everybody in the room who I've spoken to personally, I, I, obviously there's a lot of people in the room that hide in the background, which is completely okay. You'll speak when you, you know, when you feel like you want to. Um, from the people I've spoke to, you absolutely have what it takes to be successful at making these decisions. Now, whether that translates into money is going to be dictated by you saying, I know what I'm looking at. I have to take every trade that matches my criteria. And the only reason you wouldn't do that is you're not spotting them, which means that you're all over the place. It means that your list is too big. It means that you're not focused enough on cycling through, looking for levels, looking for entries. It means that you don't know what you're your entry signals are is it an inside candle is it a flag is it a breakout is it a, is it a doji is it a what i call a swing high or a swing low is it a, a topping tail a bottom tail or, or another you know those are called hammers and shooting stars you don't is it a stochastic crossover whatever it is it needs to be definite whatever it is it needs to be definite there was absolutely money to be made this week uh, the week what is this week let's let's actually so we do it for posterity the week of January 11, 2016. And by the way, I don't know if you guys are doing it, but I'm still writing 2015 on stuff. I I, <laughs> I don't break myself out of that habit already. So, yeah, Robin, actually, that's an interesting uh, an interesting comment. Uh, and if you don't mind, I'm just going to repeat it. Uh, learn that you cannot carry anything overnight. That's where I lose money enough movement, and then and that there's enough movement during the day. I want to add just one thing to that. Um, uh, that is really, really important, and it, it, 
it's a concept that I've been hammering home all week because I knew yesterday was going to happen. And you guys can go back and watch the video. They're in the private section of the forum. I knew it was going to happen this week. And you guys heard me say it probably 30 times this week. There's going to be a day we're going to rally. There's going to be a day we're going to rally. And we should have. And, and, and yesterday was the rally. You know, it was trade short, trade short, trade short. But let's discuss what we need to see. And, and yesterday was essentially the capitulation lower, finding a bottom, the market internals confirming all that. And we did get the rally. The point that I'm making here, and this is kind of, you know, jumping on what you had just said there, Robin, holding overnights long was wrong. Holding overnight short was correct because it's in the direction of the longer time frame. So, and I'm not saying this is you, so don't, uh, you know, don't, it, it's, if somebody was holding a long trade, that was not the correct trade. And, and the same way that we discussed that any longs should be, should be managed very diligently where like actually we called the top yesterday afternoon. We saw an inside candle, we saw a topping tail, we saw another inside candle and ultimately it formed a, uh, what we call a swing high, and we actually, you know, especially, and I think Apple was really the top one that we had called. We called it in the market in the spy, but we also called it an Apple that just barely pushed through one hundred dollars after going more than its average true range for the day, and then it gave us those same signals. So, if if you guys take anything out of this week in a monster way, it has to be about defining trade expectation, and trade expectation means follow through. It means what do you expect to see in follow through. Are you trading with the order flow where you can expect more follow through and maybe multiple positions and maybe hold longer and maybe size up a little bit more? Or are you trading against order flow where you are trading what is currently, and, let, and let's just keep it as simple as possible for this day trading discussion. Are you currently trading a weak stock on a longer time frame that is clearly strong today and strong right now? where it makes sense to make a trade because everything is going higher or this stock, for instance, is clearly going higher, fully recognizing that it's against the big money. So yesterday, it was clearly the right trade to make a day trade long. A lot of stocks were above the previous day's low. A lot of stocks were above the previous day's close. A lot of stocks were above the open. So, you know, some minimum criteria. It would have been extraordinarily difficult for stocks to have been above the previous day's high with the fact that the market got absolutely clobbered on, on uh, Wednesday. So I want to make that distinction, and I hope everybody's writing down in their journal. Oh, uh, thank you, Robin. I appreciate it. Yeah, that's kind of cool when it unfolds, right? And we're actually watching it. Uh, you know, we, we kind of call it, it and it unfolds. But... I, I really hope everybody and 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 um, I actually I'm not going to hope. I really want you to write down what you learned from this week about trade expectation, and whether or not you're trading with momentum or whether or not you're trading with order flow. And the, and and when you have the both of those combined with a longer time frame and the current price action is trading the same direction, that means your trade expectation is higher and you can expect follow through. And if I was teaching a seminar, essentially the way I would word that is I would say. You're setting up the expectation that determines what are the odds of your profit target being reached versus your stop loss being reached. And the better you can build that argument, and again, that's the whole point of being in the room together. My job, which which I hope that you guys see how passionate I am about, my job is to help you understand how to build that argument. And then you reduce the trades that don't make sense, and you take more of the trades that do make sense based on building that argument. And then you eventually get to the point where as much as it's humanly possible, you could make great trading decisions as often as possible and understand that you're constantly stacking the odds in your favor. So what's interesting is we recognized yesterday that it was a momentum trade long, but the whole day we said, let's draw trend lines. Let's have some criteria, whether it's uh, a, a trend line higher, whether it's a moving average, whether it's two moving averages where the fast one's above the slow one and you continue to trade long in that direction, but fully recognizing that we were trading against that bigger picture. So hopefully that, um, again, I'm not going to say hope, I'm, I'm demanding, <laughs> I'm demanding you write it down in your journal, put it on a post-it pad and put, you know, put it on whatever, you know, wherever you got to do. Trade expectation is everything. And that's implying that you understand how to take risk properly. And when you understand how to take risk properly, that's where trading conviction comes in. That's where you're confident and that's where you expect to make money because the more good trades you make, the better position you're going to be in to make money consistently. And I really, really hope everybody takes that out of this week, okay? 
And again, very similar to what we said yesterday, uh, anything that we discuss um, that you believe is important, something that matters to you, take a look over here on the chart. And again, you can see right now it's 9.25 in the morning. When you go back and watch the videotape in the afternoon, or again, whenever, I'm just saying afternoon, probably you know, now that we got the weekend coming up, you should have a list of, of one page in your journal of, okay, on Monday at 10.42, we spoke about this. So click on that video, in the, you know, click and look, go into the private forum, say it was the morning session, and that conversation ended at 9.25. So you go back to that, and you, you back it up a little bit to maybe, you know, like two or three minutes, and you see when the beginning of that conversation or when that point started. So you can start making a big list of what works, what matters, and you, then everything else is out of the equation. And that's really where trading starts to become uh, – uh, look, I'll just use the word I want to use, fun. Trading becomes fun when you understand what you're doing, and then it's just a question of managing risk. And yes, before you send me hate mail, I understand there's money involved. I get it. Every you know, Even when you're trading 100 shares, it can matter. But it's a heck of a lot more fun when you really feel like you know what you're doing. And that's the biggest goal. This week gave us some awesome opportunities to learn stuff like that. So even if you didn't do it this week where you, you weren't really diligent in writing down the time of something we discussed, and I'll give you like an example. We spent a massive amount of time this week working on the market internals and the, the short covering rally I believe that we had on Wednesday where we noticed the ticks were negative 1,500, negative 1,000, negative 750, negative 500, but the SPY was still pushing lower, that's an awesome thing to go back and, and pull that out for like out of three minutes and be like, okay, now I get that, and I'm going to follow. That's why we watch the tick. I understand now, that kind of stuff. Okay, so we have a um, – I actually changed up the stuff on the blog today where a lot of my scans were – because of the market depth of, of selling, a lot of the scans were the same, and, and you'll actually notice that I changed them up a little bit, and I'll explain uh, – I'll actually explain an email to everybody uh, over the weekend, but – I, I want to. I want before the market opens and before we start talking about you know what we're going to take a look at today. I can't emphasize this enough. There was money to be made this week, and you need to use this week as as a seminar, a five day seminar of okay, uh, what did I miss? You know, what did I miss? What what was I not seeing, or what shook me out of a good trade? You know, what was it one five minute candle, and I was like, oh gosh, what am I doing? And then did exactly what you thought, you know, or or you were in a good trade, and, and it went back in that direction immediately, and you didn't put the trade back on. What was it? And if five minute candle shaking you out, then maybe do like we've been discussing all week, where you draw trend lines. You're going to draw trend lines, and you'd be like, you know what? Until the, and here, this, you know, this example of the spiders here. You got one big five-minute candle down here. You, got, you know, maybe you got a couple of them. You're not getting shaken out because you have the trend line, and you're going to stay in that trade as long as the trend is there. You could also use a moving average, whichever one is more comfortable for you. But it needs to be definite. That's the point I want to get across. It needs to be definite. So, and I, I tell this story often, but I'm going to say it again in case you're new to the room. When you're trading, and, and I'm going to use this as a, in, in the context of a trading loss, one of my biggest losses ever was in 2011. And for those of you, you know, it, and I'm sure you guys are the same way, you have to have some element of personal achievement or success mindset or motivation mindset, whether it's Anthony Robbins, T. Harv Eker, you know, what, whoever it happens to be, whatever, whatever works for you, right? Maybe it's Brenda Burchard or whoever it happens to be. There comes a point where you're, where you're you're going to have to deal with adversity, and you're going to have to reframe it to yourself and say, all right, show some spine. You know, everybody knows how to celebrate the winning touchdown when things are going great, but you show yourself what you're made of when you get knocked around. So here's the story that I say all the time. My biggest trading loss occurred in 2011, and I don't need to necessarily say the number, but whatever the number happens to be, I'm like, I, I, I went downstairs, got a coffee at Starbucks, came back up. And I said, all right, what am I going to do about this? And I essentially said to myself, all right, that was a really expensive seminar. I better take out of it the lesson so I'm better. I just paid a lot of money for that experience. So I named the stock, and I said that was – and I'll just say this. That was a Goldman Sachs trade. I'll say that was a really expensive Goldman Sachs seminar. Now I better use what I just learned because I just paid a hell of a lot of money for it. You need to use this week as that example, even if you did not – lose money. Let's say you made some money, but you acknowledged there was a lot more on the table. Be a little angry about it and ask yourself why you missed it. And spend some time this weekend 
whatever. I mean, tonight's Friday, decompress. I always use Friday to decompress, you know, shut the computer off as much as possible. Go back, you know, if you, if you can. I know everybody's got responsibilities with family and everything. Go back and, and um, spend some quiet time on a Saturday morning if it's possible. And, and really ask yourself, what did I learn this week? Go into the videos. And, and, and again, if you didn't do it this week, start next week. Write down the time of stuff we discussed because it's really important to be able to go back into those videos. We have 10 videos in there now by the end of every week. So every week it's going to be a rolling five days of video. So Monday's video will be deleted next Monday when we start posting the new one. So that's all I wanted to say. I just want to make sure that everybody's you know heading into today and learning from the week and really going to be awesome next week and learn from everything you learned from this week. Uh, the one thing I want to say about the market opening this morning, we drew trend lines yesterday, and especially horizontal lines, and we had this 187 as a significant reference point, and we're opening up just below that this morning. We have some earnings this morning, uh, but in my opinion, we got, we're going to hover right around that level. So this lower opening is actually a dangerous short right at or near this support level. So, my, so I think we did it on Tuesday. Excuse me if I'm not mistaken. A little heartburn there. I think we did it on Tuesday where we drew – a box around the first 15 minute candle as opposed to using the opening price because we kind of felt that there was going to be a little bit wider range and we wanted to know if we traded outside of that box of the 15 minute candle as opposed to um, just using the opening price to determine if we want to be long or short. So big gap down this morning. We're probably going to get a little bit of volatility here in the first 10 minutes. So what I'm going to do is after the first 10 minute candle finishes, I'm going to draw a green horizontal line across the top, a red horizontal line around the bottom, and then we're going to use that box to determine whether or not we're in an intraday uptrend to get more comfortable with being long or short if we need to take a, a, a oversold bounce again today to determine the market bias for the day, and then we'll add the market internals to that. All right, so markets opened, obviously. A little bit bigger list today on the uh, on the long side just because of what happened yesterday, and obviously because the market was really strong yesterday, and obviously a lot of stocks now bullish engulfing candles yesterday that completely wiped out any of the selling. Um, from the from uh, the previous couple of days, so a lot of them didn't match the criteria of being down for the week even. Um, so it's going to be uh, we're going to have another good day today. There is a chance, and and I want to give you a little foreshadowing. Two minutes after the market opening, there is a chance we are sideways today. The market, you know, it's traded a lot of shares this week. We we've had some volatility, big gap down this morning. We got some bank earnings today. China oil, like there's a lot going on right now. There's a good, and this is why I want to I want to walk you guys through why I'm building why I want why I think today again using my experience that I'm, I'm hoping to give to you because of everything that happened this week heading into the weekend big gap down I think that box and the sideways market action today is going to be likely um, if we trend awesome if we don't trend we have a box that will clearly tell us right now we're going sideways so I don't have a bias on the market because intraday. This is where we're trading. We don't have a bias. So we can trade out of that and trade long if there's some momentum trades. If we trade out of it and trade short, we can get some short sales. But the size of the gap down this morning is really big. So after this week and after this gap down, plus the news that we're still having, I think that there's a good chance we're going to be sideways today. So we need to be really diligent taking some trades that we feel have room to go or not overextended and um, have room to go if they're longs as well. So. Uh, that's what we're going to be paying attention to today. So if you have anything you want to make sure that we discuss as far as stocks right out of the gate, absolutely call them out. I will uh, catch my breath and um, make sure that uh, that's stuff we're going to be paying attention to. So really good uh, week this week. Um, hopefully there's a lot of good lessons. And absolutely starting this week into next week, make sure you jot down the time of anything that we discussed. And, again, it's always going to be right here on the chart. You'll always be able to see the time on the chart, so it doesn't matter where you want. Like, because sometimes the video starts at you know nine whatever in the morning. Um, that doesn't make a difference if you just look here for the time. So you can write down, all right, nine thirty-four. We just stopped a good conversation. I want to go to that spot and listen to that conversation again. All right, and and also I interestingly, if there's anything that you'd like for me to pull the video out of, and you think that it would make you know make something like that would be a really cool blog post or or um, something you'd like a deeper discussion on, and let, even say if it's like four minutes. I don't care. I'll pull the video out and we'll have, you know, I'll put it on the post and we can have, a, we'll have comments going back and forth on that on the blog post. All right. So let's, have, let's finish the week. Awesome. Uh, I, I do feel strongly, not strongly. I'm going to take that back. I feel the likelihood of a trading range today sideways is pretty good because I think the market's a little exhausted. I think this gap down is a little exaggerated and I have a 
I have a pretty good feeling we're going to trade within the first 10 minute window trading range today, but that doesn't mean we can't take some individual trades today. Uh, so let's be on it and uh, let's have an awesome day.